So saxophone mouthpieces, plastic or hard rubber or metal? Which one do you go for? Good question. Check this out, I was tidying up the office today and I found my box of mouthpieces. And I thought it might be fun to go through and show you the mouthpieces that I've gone through in my career so far and compare some and give you some ideas on which one's best and how you go about choosing a good mouthpiece. Man, there's all sorts in here. Jumbo Java, Gadala, Van Doren T8, the good old classic Otto Link, and some Theo 1A pieces. And a whole bunch of ligatures. Oh yeah, I remember that one, that was a good one. Hey, this is pretty cool, it's kind of like my saxophone history on tenor saxophone over the last 25 years. I actually started as an alto player and then I changed on to tenor when I was in my 20s, I suppose. And the first thing I was trying to do, because I, I was really happy with my alto sound, but I wanted to find a good sound on tenor and I didn't know what to go for. Back then I wanted the sound that was gonna give me plenty of projection. So the first thing I tried was actually this mouthpiece, which is a Van Doren T95. Is it Jumbo Java? I don't know. It's blue, I thought the blue was cool back then. This is an interesting thing because I got a question this week from one of my sax school students and he was asking why he'd bought, he'd gone from a hard rubber mouthpiece to a metal mouthpiece. And he was saying, why isn't my, my sound brighter? I was expecting a much brighter sound on my metal mouthpiece than I got on my hard rubber mouthpiece, but it wasn't really that much brighter. You see, the thing is, it's not really about what the mouthpiece is made out of, it's about the internal shape, that's the real trick. So for example, this is the first metal mouthpiece that I bought, and this is a classic Otto Link to size 8 Super Tone Master. So if you have a look at the inside of this, oh, a bit manky that, haven't played that one for a while. Right, okay, so the, uh, this mouthpiece is really open, you probably can't see in there, but it's super open in there, there's no baffle or anything. It's a really big open mouthpiece, so you don't get a big projection sort of sound. So it's got to do with the internal size, and actually if you have a look at this mouthpiece, which I got to later on, oh, I love this mouthpiece, the classic Dave Guadala mouthpiece. This has got, you can see in there, it's got a massive um, baffle in there that makes the air go super fast through the mouthpiece, and it gives it a much more bright, brighter and more projection, gives it more projection. Much more projection? It gives it more projection. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's not necessarily what the mouthpiece is made from, it's about the internal shape. That's what's important. So you gotta think about what you want out of your sound uh, and then choose a mouthpiece accordingly. So my journey has changed a lot through my mouthpieces as I've gone through different periods of my playing. So, so around this period I was doing a real cross section of playing. I was having to get on one gig, uh, or maybe even in the same gig, a mellow section sound and then a really bright, commercial sound because I was uh, I was band leading, uh, we were doing shows with different singers all the time and I had to do a real cross section of playing. And so I needed something really versatile. Whereas now, I'm playing in the studio all the time and so I use something much darker. And I'm not interested in projection, I'm just really interested in getting a lovely warm sound. So now I've gone on to this. So I'm gonna start playing some of these mouthpieces and let's see if I can show you what they sound like. So first of all, I'll show you what I'm playing at the moment, which is a Theo 1A Slant Sig. I love this, a size eight, and or it's a Slant Sig 2. I really like this because there's a good compromise between the sort of brightness that you can get from these metal mouthpieces and the darkness that you get from a really nice open mouthpiece. So I've got a little bit of edge, but I've got not, I haven't got loads of projection. <laughs> So I get a nice dark sound, but I can also get good control of the altissimo and a little bit more bite. Um, I love it, it's perfect for me in the studio, it's what I really need. And I think if you're playing intimate type gigs or a big band, then this is a great mouthpiece. I'll show you what the others sound like though. Man, I thought this was such a cool mouthpiece when I first got it, but it was always a bit too bright for me if I'm honest. I know lots of people love this mouthpiece. So the Van Doren T95. <laughs> So, I mean, I haven't played this mouthpiece for years, and so it takes a bit of getting used to, but, you know, this is a hard rubber mouthpiece that's got a kind of projection and, and bite to the sound that you'd get from a metal mouthpiece, right? So this just goes to show it doesn't need to be a dark sound from a hard rubber mouthpiece. Hey, I've got another one in here. Hey, I forgot about this one. Now, this is a good comparison. So this is a classic Selma D, hard rubber. Now, this is kind of like your standard classical mouthpiece. And this is a hard rubber mouthpiece that's gonna give you that dark sound. 
It's a really big open mouthpiece. There's no baffle in there whatsoever. And it should have a lovely big warm sound. So if you got this as a hard rubber mouthpiece, you're kind of going to get your classic hard rubber sound. If I can get the ligature to fit. Hey, I love this ligature by the way. Silverstone works. Silverstein works. Brilliant. Wow, so you can hear how dark that sound is. I mean, it is beautiful, but you wouldn't want to go and do a funk gig with this because it's just not going to work. It's not really designed for that. It's designed for a dark classical sound. Open chamber, you see, that's the secret. Okay, so by comparison, if you want a metal mouthpiece that has actually got a lot of bite and edge to it, something like this Dave Guadala. I love this mouthpiece. This is the Dave Guadala Laser Trimmed Crescent. You know, I love this mouthpiece. Actually, I'll tell you a little story about Dave Guadala mouthpieces. I played them for about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or more years. And I used to have the studio, original handmade Dave Guadala studio mouthpiece. Played thousands of shows on it. And I broke it eventually. And uh, so when it came time to replace it, I couldn't get another one the same. So I got this laser trimmed crescent, which is just a little bit darker, but brilliant. And I've done thousands of shows on this. It's a really great mouthpiece, but it's got loads of projection. And you can see that big table in there and the shaping in around the inside. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's got loads going on inside. So it really makes the air go fast. Actually, another cool thing that I used to uh, do with this mouthpiece, this is the original Dave Guadala ligature. But for a long, long time, I used this ligature. Yeah, check out this puppy. This is the Winslow ligature. Love this ligature. Awesome. I don't know if you can still get them, but I thought it was a great combination with the Guadala mouthpiece just because it gives you that little bit of extra resonance. Made a big difference in my opinion. Now, if you're changing mouthpieces, it's really important that you spend a load of time getting used to the new mouthpiece. I reckon it can take a month or two months to really get used to the way a new mouthpiece plays. And in that time, you've got to spend a lot of your practice time working on long tones and chromatic exercises and things like that to really build up your embouchure and get used to the, the pitch and the intonation of the new mouthpiece. Check out my video, Seven Chromatic Warm-Ups for Saxophone, because I think that's a really useful tool when you're moving on to a new mouthpiece, just to help you get used to it. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. So if you're doing lots of loud playing, if you're doing a pop gig, or if you're playing in a band, you need lots of projection, then this Gadala or a Gadala mouthpiece is a great option. So I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone here, but it's got a lot of projection, this mouthpiece. It's got a real buzziness to the sound. But there's things about this mouthpiece that I didn't like, and that's why I changed. The first thing is that it's kind of unforgiving. If you want to play in a really quiet environment, let's say you're playing in a big band setting where you've got to sometimes play really soft and blend in with a section and then other times play really loud, it can be difficult to control. And I found I had to really adjust my reeds a lot. I, had, I struggled to find reeds that would really fit with it and be consistent with it as well. But great mouthpiece. Now what I moved on to after the Dave Guadala was this, the Theo Mane Durga. And I think this is great because it's a good compromise between Look, look at the, the similarity in the, the shape and the sort of outside size of those. So that's the Otto Link, which I mentioned before was really open and round. And then this kind of feels like that in your mouth. And it's got elements of this as well as elements of this. So it's a good crossover mouthpiece and it means that you get some projection, but you also get that warmth and a bit more controllability. Is that a sound? than you get with the Gadala. So it's a bit more forgiving. And I think, you know, now, this was a great mouthpiece back in the 80s and 90s. Now you need a bit more of a, a variety of, of sounds. And this is what this mouthpiece gives you. So this is the Theo one a Durga, Durga 2. I'll show you what this sounds like. So I'm using Leger reeds, it's a two and a half. Love these Leger reeds, because they're so, I don't have to think about adjusting them all the time. They always work. Now this is a great compromise mouthpiece because I got some of that projection that I had with the Godala but I've got more body. So this is definitely, if you're going from a hard rubber mouthpiece to a metal mouthpiece, you're going to get qualities of the metal mouthpiece in this without it being too crazy. For me, I moved on from here onto 
hard rubber mouthpieces because I started to do more playing in the studio. And so now I'm back, I, would, I tried to the Ambika first of all, which is a great mouthpiece, size eight again, but super, super dark. And now I'm on the Slant Sig, which is a good compromise of everything. So I made a video the other day about five practice mistakes, things that you should avoid, mistakes that saxophone players make. And in there I talk about how it's not about the gear, it's not really about the mouthpieces or the ligatures or the, all that, saxophones even. It's about really what you do with the mouthpiece and I really believe that. I've gone through this journey with my mouthpieces because that's, you're looking at 25 years of playing there and my the sort of playing I've been doing has changed, my concept of sound has changed, what I'm looking for out of my saxophone has changed and each of these has been a long period where I've played that mouthpiece for a long, long time. And I'll, I think I'll play this mouthpiece for a really long time now because it does exactly what I like, but who's to say in 10 years time whether I'll change my mind again. So really the secret is to choose a mouthpiece and to stick with it and really build up your skills with that mouthpiece. So thinking about your sound concept, building up your embouchure and getting the best sound that you can from that mouthpiece. Then you're gonna get the most out of your gear. But if you are making the change from a hard rubber mouthpiece to a metal mouthpiece, Think about what you're trying to get out of the sound. If you want something bright, look for a mouthpiece that's got more of a baffle in it. If you want something that's a bit more of a crossover mouthpiece, which I think is a good idea, you want to go for something that's a bit more utilitarian, like this Durga. Most people make the mistake of buying a metal mouthpiece and they get some super bright, I mean, even brighter than that, but something that's super focused. And most people regret buying a mouthpiece like that, trust me, it's a bit like, thinking you want a Ferrari and then realizing that you can't drive it in the supermarket. Is that a terrible analogy? That might be a terrible analogy. But you get what I'm talking about, right? For most people, you want something that can do more jobs than just go super fast or just play super loud. So get a mouthpiece that gives you more options. And I think something like this Durga is a great solution. But don't forget, you can also go for something that's a hard rubber mouthpiece that gives you a little bit of both. A little bit my, like my Slant Sig where I've got some warmth, I've got some projection, I've got loads of control, and it does a bit of everything for me. Are you using any of these mouthpieces? If so, let me know, leave me a comment, let me know what mouthpiece you're using, and whether that transition from hard rubber to metal was something that helped you out. I'd really like to hear about that. Your comments help me make better videos, and I'd love to hear your stories about it. Also, if it's your first time here, click subscribe, because then you'll know about the new lessons that are coming out every week to help you learn saxophone. Keep practicing hard, I'll catch you next time.